So, all right. So now that all that housekeeping is out, I would like to welcome everyone uh, to the Eye to Eye series in our first happy hour. Hopefully, you guys are all brought your adult beverages of choice. I know my panelists did as well, and uh, we're gonna have some fun today as well. Uh, now, today the topic is talking about the definition of avant-garde eyewear. And we think about that word avant-garde. It's a word that's used a lot. It's a word that is misused a lot. Uh, well, today we're going to have a chance to speak with two designers that really epitomize that word avant-garde. When we think about that, avant-garde. When we think about that as well, um, their designs really uh, push barriers, and their eyewear really are conversation starters. So let's go to our panelists. It's uh, uh, Anna Corinne Carlson and T. Kwa. Good evening, good night, and good morning to all of you. Thank you. <laughs> How are we doing? T, Hi, how's it well. going? Good. Doing Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank good, you. Good. Excellent. So we have a few questions for you both today. Uh, but my first question is a very simple question, uh, but it is a very loaded question. And uh, I'll start with you, Anna Corinne. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Anna Corinne? And tell us a little bit about your brand. Oh dear. <laughs> How long have <laughs> we got? <laughs> well, um, today we are in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, in the archipelago, uh, just outside, so by the seaside. So my family was so noisy, so I ended up going to a hotel because I wanted you to hear what I was saying. So oh, we're in this you. lovely place, I have this sea view here at the Grand Hotel. Uh, which is awesome. Um, uh, yes, and about me, um, did arts for most of my life. I uh, wrote my first, first song when I was five. So it's a very creative process. My parents weren't musicians as such, but I just started doing that and writing poetry. And um, it was very much, my whole life was very much to do with the arts. At the same time, I was uh, into um, modern culture as well. I was a basketball player who played bas um, who wrote poetry. So it was like two worlds always, you know, so it wasn't just the one line. I liked the, the differences, you know, to be, to be both in both worlds. Um, uh, and then I started doing writing music re really early as well. Um, like uh, lyrics and uh, got into fine arts, went to uh, acting college and really did not have a plan to do eyewear. It really was not my plan, but it, it sort of unfolded by lots of different, lots of different events led to this. I think so. Excellent. And tell us a little bit about your, your, your collection, your brand, Anna Corinne Carlson Eyewear. Yeah, I started my, my own brand eight years ago. Um, and I really wanted to, to take my both sides. Um, I done a lot of bespoke eyewear previously for, um, I started doing bespoke eyewear when I was 19, so quite some time ago, where I did um, uh, very traditional eyewear, mainly for men who will go to Savile Row and have the suits made in London. Then they will come to me and I will draw them a pair and make them in real shell or in gold or in, in horn or in acetate. Um, and then when I decided to do this, to do my own brand, I combined um, many, many years of uh, artisan hard work uh, with bespoke eyewear with my arts. Very nice, excellent. So T, let's move on to you. T, why don't you tell everyone out there who you are and a little bit about your brand. Okay, uh, thanks Terrence. Um, you're gonna have to excuse me because it's uh, four o'clock in the morning where I am. <laughs> so, you, are, you are a trooper T, we really appreciate you being here with us. Well, you know, you kind of forced me, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very persistent, <laughs> aren't I T? No, Frank, I'm confused. Um, yeah, right now I'm in Kuala Lumpur. Um, I, I was actually born in Malaysia, um, in, in KL, where I am. I came back to pretty much my parents are still live here. So, uh, you know, they just kind of have to take care of them uh, at this moment. Um, about the brand, I mean, uh, I, you know, I pretty much started um, um, because, you know, I've, I've been wearing glasses most of my life. That's about you know, 40 years and, and, you know, I just, one day I just decided to 
I just wanted to make my own uh, when I couldn't find anything anything that I like. So I kind of used the experience that I, I uh, that I have from the fashion industry. Um, I just kind of like, you know, and, and I had certain materials that I really like. So I just wanted to, I just started experimenting uh, with the frames and uh, just, you know, doing things with my hands and I just started making frames and uh, just kind of, you know, just kind of evolved. And you know, this, that's, that's almost 10 years ago since I started. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing, T. So T, I'm getting a few questions and actually the questions I'm getting are people mm -hmm. asking me, um, these are great glasses that I'm wearing. Uh, what are they? Do you want to answer that question? <laughs> sure. Um, that's one of our, um, I think we launched this uh, in last year's uh, Vision Expo in New York. Uh, the code name for this frame is uh, Night Owl. So it actually it's uh, uh, inspired by an owl. Um, it's kind of with the wings flapping and and you know this is pretty much the definition for avant-garde for us you know just pretty much experimental eyewear so what you're wearing now is it's uh, crafted from aluminum magnesium so it's super light and completely original shaped and um, if you look close closely there's a uh, two or three colors in it because we, we color them a couple of times and um, we use our hands to texture it a little bit and and when you look at it you 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 wouldn't know that but it actually comes with a clip that's the frame right yeah actually we use the little clever magnet system and kind of like so it actually comes with a clip and um, this is just something that we we design and made from scratch um, yeah I mean this is what we do and this is regards yeah this is pretty much you're wearing the uh, our uh, you know key frame that we're really proud of the design and originality no no it's, it's a very well made frame it's a, I'd say it's always a conversation starter whenever <laughs> Exactly. Conversation, uh, positive for the rest of this time, but I don't want to ignore the status of where we're at in this time of things. So just asking you guys, so how's the climate where you guys are located right now? Uh, and also uh, how, what challenges, or what's the biggest challenge that you see affecting your brand? So Anna, let's start with you. Uh, well, I'm in Sweden and you must have heard that we are kind of liberal as always. Um, so some stores are open and I'm in a hotel, which is um, open. <laughs> uh, for my own brand, like just before, uh, this is really my year. So we were going into the year with such a bang with like everything going like, wow, this is the year, hooray. And then, <laughs> and then I actually flew to Italy. I was in Milan for Mido. I went there pre to ski and to try to do some also research on my new lenses, how they will react on snow. And we got the news that Mido is down and I was just like, what are we gonna do? And I didn't even for one second think, oh, I'm not gonna do this. I'm like, okay, let's rent a, an up somewhere in Milan and I'm doing a show on my own. And then it's like, oh, maybe that's not a good idea. You know, it started like creeping on to me like, so um, yeah, so um, um, I think uh, the most difficult part is um, probably like um, uh, how to how to get going with everyone and how to get all the products to our clients that have placed orders already when they're closed and stuff like that. Sure, no, absolutely. What about you, T? How's the uh, climate we're at right now uh, and also in where you're from and what challenges are you seeing right now that are affecting your business? Well, you know, I think the challenge is pretty much the same for everyone at the moment. Um, it's really, you just have to kind of be patient and uh, keep the operation running and, um, you know, communicate with everybody else. Um, for us, uh, it's a good thing we are pretty, you know, we are a small atelier, so everyone is still working, um, you know, because Hong Kong was hit early and, um, you know, back in January and 
we've, we've had like just single cases for a week now, daily single cases. So things are kind of recovering. So we're lucky in that sense, um, you know, we, we suffered earlier and, but at the moment it's kind of recovering and uh, everybody's back to work. Um, logistics is still a problem uh, because there are not many flights yeah, all, all over the world. Um, but the key thing is, um, you know, for us to concentrate on markets that are open and just kind of be patient in markets that are not open at the moment. That's really pretty much the only thing we can do and you know it. Yeah, yeah, patience is real key right now, isn't it? And I think we're all watching the way the world is unfolding. Uh, so let's get to the theme, the theme of our event today, uh, the word avant-garde. Now, both of you uh, have very different brands. But when you look at the description of your eyewear and your website, you both use the word, or the term, avant-garde to describe your eyewear, your brand. So, T, let's start with you. In your, in your mind, what is the definition of avant-garde and how does regards fit into that definition? Well, to be honest, um, um, you know, you know, avant-garde is it's very uh, overused and overexposed. And, um, in fact, initially, I mean, people call us avant-garde and we just kind of like st stuck with it, you know. Um, for us, it's, it's pretty much about um, being original, um, experimental, um, and, you know, with respect to art, culture, society. Um, just, I mean, it's just about doing something different that, that, and that's never been done. Um, and pretty much what we've been doing in the past, you know, decade is, is just pretty much doing things that have never been done. Uh, you know, we've, we've worked with copper eyewear, I mean, copper as a material or um, the way we um, work with aluminum, magnesium and all these textures and designs. Um, I think the Mad Scientist series is also a very, um, uh, one of our representative uh, model. Um, yeah, so for us, it's just about, you know, being non-conformist and staying original and staying true to what we believe in. And Anna, what about you? What would you say, what would Anna Karen Carlson describe as avant-garde by your definition? And how does that fit your brand? Well, I think when I started uh, my brand, uh, everything I did was quite bold and very, very strong. So <clears throat> it was uh, very new to people. So people were like almost get confused because it was just so strong and so different. So um, in my first collection, I was um, contacted by a company that were negotiating to get the Alexander McQueen license. And they were like, hey, we want you to design this collection. And I was like, ah, it's everything to me. McQueen, his clothes, you know. So my first collection, actually, the, all the cat teeth, etc., was meant for McQueen. And then they didn't get the license in the end. So then I made my own version of it, Anna Karin Carlson um, avant-garde. So I put a lot of my poetry into the stark and little bit oddness of it all. Because I like glamour and I like the introverted, extroverted definition. And that's my, my view on avant-garde. Interesting. So this, as you said before, uh, you didn't realize you were to create your own collection. This came first from a, a deal, possible deal with the Queen. Kind of. I knew I had to do this, you know, like sooner or later, but I was like, it's going to be too much work. How am I going to manage this? So <laughs> I was like pushing it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I want to move on, Anna, while I still have you. I want to talk about something that's really, oh. really hot right now in the industry, and that is um, brand storytelling. You know, people love a brand with a story, whether you are a designer and you're talking, telling a story to a buyer, or you are a retail shop owner, you want to convey a brand story to your, uh, your consumer. Uh, everyone's very curious about that. Now, to me, I feel like you have mastered the art of storytelling when it comes to your brand. Uh, do you remember when you and I first met? Yes. In, in Milan? Uh, 
so everyone, Anna and I met in Milan. She invited me to the penthouse showroom, very Anna Karin Carlson style. Yep. And, we sat, <laughs> and we sat there in Milan, and for about 45 minutes, she went and talked about the story of her frame before we even looked at one piece of eyewear. Um, ah, so Anna, that? <laughs> you remember that? Yes, yes. So Anna, let's talk about storytelling. How, mm -hmm. how important is storytelling or brand storytelling when it comes well, to it, your collection? Well, it, um, it sort of started off with, for instance, I did my, I read my first song called Amsterdam when I was five years old. It was a story about love in Amsterdam. I mean, go figure. <laughs> what five-year-old does this, you know? Right, right. <laughs> and for me, it was like how you play with words. It's always been about the words, how, you, how I feel happy about the words I create them, how I put them, what the meanings are, the double meanings. So for me, words, poetry came before I even knew that I wanted to do anything to do with I wear. The words were there before and the, the singing and the words, you know? Uh, so to me, it has never been another way to create a painting or write a song, which I do. They all have meanings to me. Otherwise, I have no point. Everything else has been made. I have to make things that I, you know, when I'm gone, you're going to look back at it as like, that's, that's what she meant. You know, like I want, I want it to have, I want to have an impact while I'm alive. And I only want to create beauty while I'm alive in one way or another. Absolutely. Well, let's take an example. I'm going to put a frame up in a oh, very yeah. AKK frame. Um, oh. <laughs> it's an it's a, it's a Anna Karin Carlson throwback. Uh, well, this is from my first collection. And my first collection was so, so, so important to me because I had nothing. Everything, like I had absolutely nothing. Me and my, me and my son, we lived on $400 a month. I was a single wow. mom, yeah. Wow. So I created a collection without anything. So uh, this, the story for this little bugger is called Rose La Mer. Rose is my big sister, Rosemary. And I went to help her because um, she had to escape the Albanian mob. Wow. So we were driving around the Alps in a like pickup, like a big truck van um, to help her escape and move her around and down to the south of France. And... Um, I've been spending quite some time to help my sister out with her um, really odd life at the time. And uh, as I went back to Sweden, uh, my sister got mugged. And my sister is super glamorous. She doesn't leave the house without a thousand diamonds. So she got mugged. <laughs> and I was just like, I need to make a frame that she can wear. So she doesn't have to wear the thousand diamonds and be mugged. So this is Rosa La Mer, the rose in the sea. I saw her sitting uh, by the Mediterranean and I wanted her face to be like content, like, like shit never happened to her. Um, so I'm very emotional with this frame, the rose in the sea, yeah. I mean, that's what I love about your, your, your eyewear. You really always have a piece of you and a piece of your life in the eyewear. Mm -hmm. It's almost like people are wearing a piece of Anna Quinn Carlson. Yeah, bring that's, your on. That, yeah, that's how I feel. I feel like um, the sleepless nights, the uh, not knowing my kids, uh, <laughs> the, the manic, that's also what you are buying. You're buying into my, you know, my world completely. Hmm. Well, that's a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Uh, T, let's move on to you. Um, on your website, you describe your designs as uh, being original and being non-conformist. Um, no, I, I love the fact that you, you always use different materials. How would you say your materials fit into that description of being original and non-conforming? Well, I mean, um, recently we've been doing quite well with the, um, the, the copper series. And as far as I know, I've, I've not seen a, a frame made from copper and Certainly, I've never. Uh, we've, I'm pretty sure that we're the first one who's using, um, who's putting a patina on a copper, and um, it all started when, you know, I, I, you know, like it started really from the kind of atelier point of view, you know, manufacturing, like the producing it, 
uh, when we make frames, um, because we're really small and we do everything in-house, so we have to kind of think of ways that we can make the pro uh, the glasses like different and original. So when I thought of copper and, you know, because first of all, you know, with copper uh, in its raw form, it's, it's a beautiful color. Have you guys seen like uh, the copper sheen itself? You don't really, you, you don't have to color it. It has a beautiful um, kind of a gold hue. Um, it's very organic looking, it's very beautiful. Um, and you have, and when you patina it, it gets a beautiful green. Um, and we kind of like uh, experimented with the, um, what we call time machine where we accelerated the patina of the frames. And, you know, this way, every frame is different. And when it patinas, it's, it's really beautiful. It's, it's like, it's almost like a, it's like a treasure or something, you know, and every pair is different. And um, so, yeah, back to your, your question, like the, about nonconformists. And I'd say this is one of the, the things that we do um, that makes us different, you know, um, one of the many things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I know that one thing you will not see, you know, regards frame is acetate. You know, you're always using these uh, very unique metals. But I think also contributes to that, uh, uh, that term avant-garde. Um, I have a question from the audience, a really good one. They said, how do you deal, this could be for either Anna or T, uh, how do you deal with manufacturers when they say they cannot do something or your designs are impossible. Do you come across this often, Anna? I say, charge me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to elaborate a little bit that, on Anna? Charge me. <laughs> <laughs> and then your question later will be, why do things cost a lot? Charge me. Come on, sting me, sting me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, let's talk about the price point because uh, whether it's apparel, whether it's eyewear or accessories, um, there's a price to pay when it comes to an avant-garde frame. So how do you explain to a buyer or to a consumer when they ask, uh, you know, Anna or T, why is your frame this much? Why is this much more than the average luxury frame? Uh, do you want me to start, T? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. Uh, I um, um, explain. Well, I've been very lucky that most of my clients actually don't ask. And they know, like by by researching the brand, what goes into it. Um, for instance, I can I can work on a, a process for years. Like it's not possible. And then I bend, and then I bend, and then I bend. I do. I just push, 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 push. So it can take me years and so much time to make that perfect frame. Um, and then we do really small series. I, from this collection into the night, we do some are like made out of seven and we make seven out of them and, and up to 150. So we have like literally one of the smallest production in the world. Um, and then I want to create couture eyewear. So like precious stones, I use real gold a lot because I love gold. Um, yeah, and keeping it to like more of a couture house of eyewear than, than maybe like, you know, the big, the big brands is, you know, for the masses. Hmm. What about you, T? How do you answer that question? Well, I mean, um, for us, it's the material cost. Yeah, you know, we work with um, buffalo horn, sterling silver. Um, pure titanium, uh, even copper, you know, it's, um, these are costly materials. Um, and we don't make a lot of it. Yeah. And because we run our own atelier, um, every frame is made one by one. You know, we make one frame at a time and we can trace every frame back to the artisan. Mm -hmm. So we know who makes this, for example, we, I know who makes your frame. There's a unique serial number on your frame. And um, so we can kind of trace everything back because we do it, you know, we do it in our own facility. Um, so, you know, that and, you know, of course the, um, uh, the 
the designs, yeah. I mean, the the effort that we put into the designs and the experiments, and yeah. So, and you know, we we're pretty much we're not that that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true. That is true. Absolutely. But reasonable. Um, no, I would definitely agree with that. I definitely yeah. agree, uh, especially for what you're getting, the materials you're using, and everything that goes into both of your frames. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were remiss if we didn't talk about a subject that I just love so much. I love it when we talk about fashion, I love to talk about eyewear, and that is collaborations. Uh, now, both of you have had some very epic collaborations in this industry. Um, but when you collaborate with another designer, another artist, they, you don't have complete creative control. So start with you, T. T, how are you able to still do a collab, but still have maintain your artistic direction and your brand direction? I think it's all about finding the right, um, the right partner and the right uh, brand, uh, the right person to collaborate with. You, you just gonna, you have to see, you know, if we're connecting and if our our kind of uh, views are, are similar. Um, that's very important. I think collaboration, uh, in a way, for us, it's it's a way to kind of widen our horizon. Um, it's also a good opportunity for us to learn from from people in the industry. You know, uh, you know, every day we are learning something new, and so it's something that we actually look forward to uh, every season. Um, um, and obviously, if if the, if the designer, for example, Uma Wang, that we've we've been collaborating for uh, three four seasons now. Especially if she's on the, the Fashion Week calendar, Paris Fashion Week, and you get this exposure, you know, on the runway and the, to the fashion buyers, and um, it's a, it's also a different market. You know what I'm saying? Like we sell to opticians, but the fashion designers they sell to high end boutiques and probably a different uh, country or um, target market. So I think it's a, it's um. It's all about finding the right partner and, you know, somebody you, you, you kind of share similar views. Yeah, that's important. So, T, I want to take some time to, this is one of my favorite frames. Right. Regards, this is a collaboration that you did with Uma mm -hmm. Wang. Can you walk us exactly. through what went into this collaboration? Yeah. Um, th for this season, it was, um, yeah, Uma was, uh, was, she wanted something very um, to do with wood. She did like wooden earrings and um, a lot of uh, kind of a brown tones. And so she wanted something made from wood. And um, so we kind of went back and forth. And um, one of the things she loves is, is, is furniture. And I happen to, to, I collect a lot of furniture actually. and. Most of them are, are wood furniture. So we kind of like, this is like a kind of a tribute to, to these really well-made furnitures that, that's made in the past. So in a way the frame itself is actually made from solid wood. Um, we sourced the wood from a, a, a really small factory, uh, wooden factory uh, that makes furniture. These are actually leftover woods. So we were able to to get blocks of these woods and we actually just kind of made them. And this frame was made from scratch. So everything on that frame, including the hinges, um, it was made from nothing. So, and, and people love that frame, uh, even though it's, it's, it's a little bit heavier than usual uh, because it's, it's, it's a solid chunk of wood yeah, and um, but we get so many people liking that frame and and uh, it really makes it all worth it, you know, all the sleep, is, uh, all the time spent. Absolutely. And I've seen people wear this as optical yeah. and sun. And it, it's exactly. stunning. It's stunning in yeah. either way, you know. Uh, Anna, I'm going to you, Anna. I want to ask you about, a f I feel like, Anna, that I've met you before I met you personally. Oh. <laughs> and that's because I met uh, your work. And I saw this frame on television one day yes and I said to myself who made that frame I can never forget it. I'm watching Empire oh, and, Taraji, yeah. and Taraji P Henson who plays Cookie 
walks into mm -hmm. a studio, lets down her lens, looks around like a, like a boss, and puts it back up. And I was yeah. like, made that frame. And then that's how I discovered Anna Karen Carlson. So can you tell yeah. us a little about this collaboration? Yeah, can you see there is actually a gold beak? Uh, so on the left oh, yes, side there, yes. so it's a right black here. swan. It's a black swan. Hmm. So here we are the swan yeah. here, the tail. Yeah. And then the gold beak right here. Yeah. So I wanted to make like, you know, black swan. It's like the danger, the the, the difficulty and yeah. Um, so I, I normally, I'm not like a collaboration kind of woman, actually. I'm very stubborn and headstrong, so. But it was <laughs> Bia Åkerlund, uh, who is one of the top stylists in the world. Uh, she asked me and she helped me so much. Like she placed the, my glasses on Lady Gaga and Beyonce. It's like, and I need your help to make this for my next thing I'm doing. I was like, okay. <laughs> Uh, so she's like, can you come up with options? I want sort of like a hat thing. And then I want something like fabulous that you can move around with. And then I'm sort of like, okay, it has to be bloody awesome. So that's how I made that. And um, uh, the second time I've done a collaboration was because Patty Wilson called me. Anna, I need you for a fashion show. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> normally I'm not that kind of person. I go like, okay, I'm like, oh no, I'm difficult to work with and I need my space and oh. And he was like, okay, all right, no problem. <laughs> so it's kind of a coincidence that people needed me, you know? Yeah, yeah. those are two hard phone calls to ignore them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pick it up, <laughs> pick it up. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Anna, recently, more recently, I should say, you launched an optical collection. Yes. Uh, now, some may say it's easier for avant-garde to be expressed through sun collections, but mm -hmm. how are you able to still stick with the theme of the Anna Karin brand, even having now an, an everyday optical collection? Well, uh, optical is a little bit softer uh, because I mainly do for, for ladies. Uh, and they sort of, the ladies I create for in the evenings, they want to slow dance and kiss. So they have to be like, they want to be a little bit demure and lovely, you know? And the men who wears my thing, they're, you know, in tune with the masculinity. <laughs> I'm going to do, do a frame change. No, no disrespect uh -huh. to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, go <over> here. <laughs> yeah, so, so the men, men I have as my clients, yeah, they are sort of, they're less in tune with their, with their masculinity and can be a little, you know, has a little oomph to them, you know? Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. So how are you doing that with your optical collection? How are you able to express that? Uh, I refine it. Uh, I think about what brings out uh, the best in your features. So you get like, hmm, hmm, you know, like uh, feminine and and uh, suave, or like I have um, Sheka with me. Sheka, it's a new frame. Uh, it was um, one of my clients, it's a sheikh in Dubai. And he told me, I need a pair of glasses for my sheikha. And I was like, I never heard sheikha before. So that's the name of this frame. I just wanted to make a frame that was just so, so light. So this is a uh, titanium and white gold. And then I just uh, wanted to have like a, a line at the top. So it's just like, Gorgeous. when you move, like, it just comes like a row of, of crystals, you know? Wow, it's beautiful. It's good for slow dancing, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or fast dancing. I don't have my pres uh, I don't have my prescription in here yet, but I'm gonna make these as part of my. I need some some glasses now, so yeah, I love them. Thank you. Thank you. So, getting a question in the audience about CAD, about what CAD systems do you guys use for your design? Um, yeah. I, I do everything. I do everything by hand. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Thank what about you, T? Um, yeah, I. I Actually, if you look at our um, Instagram, like sometimes we we post our drawings. So we actually, because you know, I'm I'm actually not from the industry, and I came. So yeah, we actually hand drawn as well, um, right on the uh, to the very fine minor detail. All right, so no CAD systems here, guys. Sorry, that's, a, that's another uh, designer you have to ask. <laughs> well, that's very impressive that both of you are doing all these uh, amazing elaborate designs by hand. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. so, so, and I have a question for you. 
Uh, you yes. have a long roster of celebs that wear your uh, wear Anna Karin Carlson, mm -hmm. uh, Gucci Mane, Ashanti, uh, J Lo, Beyonce, Cindy Crawford. Um, uh, why do you think so many A list celebrities are attracted or craving Anna Karin Carlson? Uh, a few things, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the beginning, I just you know I had such limited resources, so I didn't give anything away. So nobody could get anything from like, can I get it that one? You know, like people gifts and stuff. So I think it was like, we need to get a Carlson. So I had like the main stars buying from me. I was like, yeah, great. You know, now I'm in a different position. Um, but, but I think, um, I, th I think you musicians kind of can tell that this could have been a song instead, you know, I think, if you into music that way, I think you can feel the vibe. That uh, if I took the time it took to make the one you have on on you to a song, it would be a great song. It's like a connection there, I think. From yeah. Now, I um, speaking of the frame that I have on, I realized I was twinning recently with this one. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us a little bit what what, what went into this frame that J Lo was wearing? Uh, yeah, it was. I just wanted to make like a bossy kind of frame, the bossiest frame there was, uh, and still was sort of retro 70s. Um, it's titanium, it's a lot of uh, gold, and then to find the crystals, because most crystals manufacturers don't do crystals that I like, the sizing. So there was a lot of sourcing from different uh, small manufacturers so that could make crystals like that. And then once the crystal came, it has to be like the right color. Sometimes the small manufacturers don't have exactness. So it, it took a lot of effort to make one of these because of the crystal matching versus the Japanese um, artisans who has to place them. Like, oh, it's a quarter of a millimeter off here. I'm like, ah, <laughs> and you can't sort of start cutting them because they crack. So it was just like months and months and months of productions to fit those crystals you know, into. Mm. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So I have one last question for both of you, but uh, we're going to have some Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box. Or uh, if you'd like to come on video, please feel free to raise your hand as well. Um, so we have a lot of uh, new designers, uh, experienced designers, up and coming designers. We have some retail uh, uh, owners on the uh, line today as well. Uh, what advice would you give them? What have you learned now being in business for the time you're in? And what advice would you give them when it comes to designing and as well as buying uh, eyewear that we consider avant-garde? T, when we start with you. I mean, for the designers, um, I would say this, you know, I'll say this, just, you know, just do your own thing and um, make something different. Um, we, we, I mean, I would really welcome it, um, you know, more diversity and work with more different materials, not just the usual, uh, you know, stuff and do something different, you know, because I think we, we, we're we missing that in the industry these days. Um, and for the buyers, I, I would say like, um, I mean, you know, just look at the frame for what it is and the effort that's put in and uh, the details, the, um, you know, the, you have to look closely. I have to really look closely and uh, beyond the, the facade. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, that's great advice. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. what, what about you, Anna? What advice do you have for up and coming designer or a retail? Uh, yeah, I mean, life is kind of, semi short all of a sudden you're halfway through it and you know, have some fun you know <laughs> uh, do some different you know have some dignity and do something different don't just follow and uh, for buyers it will be you know also have some fun you know and go f help the um, independent truly independent um, companies because we can feel your love <laughs> <laughs> every, every, one by one, we can feel the love. <laughs> Excellent. Very nice. So this is an interesting question. This comes from Morgan. Um, 
uh, Morgan actually just won the Vision Expo and the CFDA, EDCFDA talent search. And she's asking, she's having a lot of difficulties with manufacturers. And she's asking, are you working with jewelers or eyewear manufacturers or both? Was it to me or to both of us? Uh, to both, let's start with you, Anna. Yeah, uh, I, I've done both. Uh, I've done both. I've worked with the jewelers um, when the eyewear people couldn't make it. And then once the jewelry could make it, the eyewear people could. So it's, it's, um, it's a process, you know. So uh, when I do precious, um, then it's definitely um, jewelers who make, who make the, the diamond setting. Uh, but when I do um, optical as well, it's it's been uh, it's been it's been a mix. Mm. Nice. Very good. So here's another question. Maybe T you could take this one. Uh, someone's yeah. asking about timelines. Uh, they say being a uh, small independent eyewear brand, how do you deal with timelines that are not met by your manufacturer? You just have to learn by mistakes, and and not repeat the mistakes. That's the only advice I can, I pretty much can give because it's really, you know, you, you, you don't know it until you do it. Um, you know, get your, get your hands dirty and it's just kind of have to, it's hard work. It's a lot of hard work and, you know, hopefully you, you improve every year and, you know, you, you just, you know, get better at it with timelines. And, and in a way, if you, if you are really independent, you know, you can, you know, like me, you know, I'm up at 4 a.m. So, <laughs> so you, know, you, have to, you just have to make sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, my kids is asleep and, you know, I'm here and you know, it's, it's kind of like do your own thing and, you know, learn, learn from mistakes. Mm, interesting. So someone's asking, well, what happens if your manufacturer delays? Is there anything that you've learned in your process of how to deal with that? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, I, yeah, I can do. Uh, well, I've had uh, lenses being delayed half a year, um, sun lenses, and you know, like, okay, I don't have a collection this year. Well, really, you just have to like drink a lot of gin and tonic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, last last autumn, I drank a lot of gin and tonic. <laughs> Literally, I was smelling gin and tonic, and then. <laughs> I went to bed one night and then I woke up and I was like, I'm going to fix this. So I called the um, director of the same company in my country and said, you know, sort this out for me. You need to deal with this. And uh, he phoned me back a few hours later. It's like, they'll be with you in a couple of weeks. Amazing. Taking that initiative. Like, to you're not screaming at people. <laughs> it's like, step back, you know, figure it out, deal with it. Mm. I think, you know, I think there are always alternatives, you know, if, um, if, you know, brand A lens is not available, you know, people are hungry for business, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt for you to look around a little bit, um, you know, sometimes the biggest brands aren't necessarily the, the best. Mm -hmm. Good point. All right, so that was our last question, but before we go, um, I actually do have one more question, I lied. But I like to play a game with both of you. Since you guys are, <laughs> you guys have, you, you know avant-garde eyewear so well, you, you, you're both, your fashion sense in general, which is absolutely amazing. So uh, we're gonna play a game, all right? Uh, the game is called Versace or Hibachi. So I'm gonna show you some looks of uh, some celeb wearing looks and are supposed to be avant-garde if you like it. I want you to let me know, is it Versace? Or if you don't like it, I want you to hibachi it for me. So let's uh, let's start with this one. This is uh, Travis Scott in 2017. Anna, what do you think, Versace or uh, hibachi? Can you press it up so I can see? The first the first thing I don't do is I like, never ever slag anyone off. That's number one Excellent. in communication in fashion. You know, if you have something Excellent. bad to say about somebody, put it in your mouth and swallow it, and then come up with something good. So that's is going to explain how I how I answer. Okay, so Travis Scott. He looks very futuristic. I would love to go out with a coffee with him in that outfit. Mm, looks good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What about you, T? What do you think about this one? I can't really see the picture. Um, could you? Uh, <laughs> oh no! Is it a zoom in or something? I mean, uh, 
How about this? Uh, no, it's very small, but I've seen this before in the tabloids. That's why. Uh, <laughs> Yo, T, it's funny. I looked at this uh, outfit here. Like, this is an outfit I can definitely see some regards frames. I'll send it to really? you another time. I'll, I'll send I it to you on the you. offline. I trust you. Yeah. Definitely, I'll send it to you offline. I can definitely see Travis right. Scott in one of your collections. So let's talk about one last question I have. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with the um, with the eyewear industry, what we're going through, uh, we had to cancel or postpone some of our early trade shows, and I know you guys had things to release. Um, Anna, you showed us some of your optical. T, was there anything that you were going to release or still uh, at the optical shows in the first quarter of this year that you want to let the industry know about? Oh, uh I actually don't have it with me because I'm, I'm <laughs> It's all right, it's all right. You want to no. tell us about it? I didn't know this was an advertorial. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about it. What's, uh, what, is, what does it look like? What does it look like? Um, I, I made like a visor. Um, it's just kind of like, you know, protecting your, your you know, it it's kind of goes with the coronavirus thing. Uh, you know, it's kind of shielding your eyes and, you know, it's, uh, it's I wanted to kind of like push it out there for, um, cause you know, this, uh, this thing started in like January. And so I kind of rushed it out and it was based on a design that, um, that were nominated for the Silmo door, uh, 2017. So we kind of updated it a little bit and, um, um, at a really, uh, we wanted to push it out, but unfortunately we couldn't show it to people. Yeah. That's what we look forward to seeing it. If you post on your Instagram, I'll definitely share it with everybody. All right. Let us let us know. And Anna, anything that you want to let us know that you are planning to releasing at Vision Expo East this year? Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, there were some opticals and stuff, but I haven't actually got them yet. Some of the factories in Italy closed. Uh, but before I, I got the, um, should have had them for New York, yeah. yeah. Well, again, also, if you ever uh, want to share them with me at any time, I can always post on our Instagram. Yeah, I think uh, I probably I will look. launch them next year. Yes, they were just okay. samples, yeah. Uh, if, I yeah if I like them, <laughs> I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> they're, still, they're still close. Excellent, um, excellent. Uh, I, I just uh, got, um, you know, you asked about new designers. I just want to add one thing. It's uh, also for them to look at new markets, not to be only stuck on the same markets. There are other markets that are awake when others are asleep. Very good point. Very good point. Yeah. Very good one. Sorry. Yeah, because now when everything is down, I have, I still have some African clients. So I'm super happy, you know? Uh -huh. Egypt is kicking in and you know a few other places around so some places are completely dead then somewhere is awake it's just to you know sniff around be adventurous don't stay to the plan just one you know mm. very good advice mm -hmm. I want to thank both of you this was a really good discussion thank you, thank you for uh, sharing your creative expertise. T thank you for waking up at four o'clock in the morning where you are uh, really appreciate you coming My out to share with us <laughs> Excellent. So everyone, this is our first happy hour. As you know, our eye to eye series uh, goes on on Wednesday with Coffee Talk. Uh, mm -hmm. This week on Coffee Talk, we're going to have a discussion uh, moderated by Mick Kling, Dr. Mick Kling from Envision Optometry. Uh, he's going to talk about now what? Uh, developing your COVID-19 business recovery plan. So that's going to be Wednesday at 12.15. So we encourage all of you to uh, tune in to Coffee Talk. Check my link in my bio uh, on my page, the Vision Expo Instagram page, and you'll be able to see uh, where that's coming from as well. Um, we're also going to be instituting uh, something we launched at Vision Expo West last year. We're supposed to do it again at East this year, is the next generation of retail speed dating. This is a really nice program where uh, mentees can apply and can be chosen to get one-on-one -on -one mentorship from an experienced retailer. Uh, so uh, on February, on March, excuse me, March, on May 1st, uh, we're gonna hear from Wendy Sally from Sally Opticians. She is the owner of Sally Opticians in Atlanta. She's been uh, open for business for 30 years, uh, has been dealing with independent eyewear for the entire time. 
And if you would like to apply to be a mentee, give it about an hour. You'll see the link in my bio, on my Instagram page, at The Optical Poet as well. So we want to thank all of you for taking the time out for being here. Anna and T, thank you both so much again. Thank you so much. For sharing well, it as well. You. And uh, we look forward to more avant-garde designs from everybody. So. We do our best. There you go. Well, everyone, okay. signing off. See you guys next time. See you. See you.